Hello, my name's Ian, you're watching Pixels at Dawn, and today we're going to do something a little bit different. A little bit of a vlog format, as you might be able to garner by my surroundings. Um, blimey, I really need to decorate this room a bit more. There's not, not much on the walls, is there? But uh, I'm usually looking in this direction, because that's where the computer is. What can I say? But anyway, that's a bit off topic. Today is um, the 35th birthday of the Spectrum. It's um, It's been a long time. Uh, it's as old as me, would you believe? I'm so youthful. <laughs> um, and I thought well, I'd talk a little bit about my memories of the Spectrum and uh, what it means to me as a sort of retro computer guy. I mean, I never had a 48K Spectrum, which was the one that was released 35 years ago. Although I did play on one because uh, one of my friends did have one. But um, it's... Uh, I really get, got into the Spectrum, I think I was about eight. I don't have a good memory for these things, but I think I was about eight years old and I got a Spectrum 128K plus 2A, this beautiful black brick of a computer. Um, you could probably kill a small child with it, but it was it was a thing of beauty to me as a, as a young lad. Um, Luckily, because it was a 128K, I never had the joy of fiddling around with tape recorder controls, which I know a lot of people had issues with back in the day. But, uh, yeah, I got it for my birthday. Parents bought it me, I think from Dixon's, which is where a lot of consumer electronics in the UK came from those days. Um, but, uh, yeah, the Spectrum was uh, was my first computer, and uh, my first love, <laughs> as you might say. And um, it's, uh, I don't know. What what can I say about the the uh, joy of um, one of my one of my earliest childhood memories? As I say, not a particularly good memory. So <laughs> you know, one of my earliest childhood memories is, is um, being sat in our uh, living room with my new Spectrum sort of balanced on the coffee table and the cables sort of streaming across the floor towards the uh, sort of wooden panelled TV as we had that back then, um, playing pro my first game I played on the Spectrum, which was um, purely uh, Donkey Kong uh, port, the uh, Nintendo Classic, because um, the pack I got, I can't remember, I was trying to find out what the exact pack was, but uh, the pack I got had uh, Mario Brothers and um, Donkey Kong Hypersports, I think, as well, and there was a couple more things in there as well, but I can't remember exactly what they were, but... Um, yeah, it was it was a revelation to me. Uh, I've got this very distinct picture in mind. There is actually a photo somewhere, which I haven't been able to dig out, um, of me in my pyjamas and a full head of hair <laughs> um, playing on uh, on my uh, spectrum with a massive grin on my face. So, yeah, I mean, that was the start of a love affair for me. I mean, uh, it's, it's a shame, really. I don't have any of my old spectrum stuff because back in those days, it was just a case of... When I moved from one computer to another, you just had to get sell off everything in order to pay for the new one. So when I got my Amiga 600 um, many years later, um, yeah, the Spectrum had to go, unfortunately. And uh, regrets, you know, I have a few. But, um, yeah, I remember one of my memories was I had a desk in my room um, with the Spectrum on. And it had desk drawers. And each drawer had just a whole load of tapes in it um and uh top drawer was always codemasters and i was a big codemasters fan back in the day um i mean i've got I, I i bought a couple i've got a tiny collection again now so you got like a treasure island dizzy and uh atv um and i've also got obviously this isn't codemasters but a uh, classic deformed random character horace when horace goes skiing it's all good, but um, one of the things with the uh, Codemasters games, I don't know whether you can see that, if it'll actually focus in. Uh, no, no, it's not going to focus, is it? But um, the uh, it's got a each one has a number on the side, which was a bit of a worry in terms of uh, that hoarder mentality, that collector mentality, because I I had a whole drawer full, of, and they're all in catalog order, and it's like if I actually had the money and not sort of working on children's pocket money, I might have. <laughs> Just kept buying them and filling in all the gaps. But uh, yeah, the top drawer was Codemaster. The second drawer down was like Hit Squad type, that, that budget label. I think it was an ocean budget label. I don't know. Um, and then there was just 
loads and loads, because you could pick up loads of Spectrum games back in those days for like one, two quid from uh, W.H. Smith or John Menzies or something like that. And it was great. I mean, um, I had plenty of stuff back in the day. And um, I would save up. And it, an interesting thing with uh, games back in those days is you'd quite often pick up a game, have no idea how to play it and never work it out. But it, it only cost you a couple of quid, so you didn't care. What well, one that really comes to mind for me is uh, Nightmare, based on the old TV show. With uh, Trey Guard and all the Dungeoneers, nasty, and all that kind of business. Um, I I couldn't play that game. I was in the first room, and I have since found out through a walkthrough how you did it, but I just wandered around the room, could not figure out how to get out, and I never got any further in the game than that first room. <laughs> um, but, you know, you didn't feel like it was wasted money because it didn't cost very much. You don't get that th those these days because uh, games cost so damn much these days. So uh, there you go. Um, another memory of mine for Spectrum was um, we once went on holiday in a friend's caravan in Wales um, and digging around the cupboard I discovered they had an old 48k Spectrum um, with a load of games and it's like great it's raining outside um, I'm here with my family but I'm sure they'll be fine on their own I'll just go and play some Spectrum games so Horace Goes Skiing was one of the ones that I, uh, I played there was a uh, one called Pedro, which is... A few of them almost sound a little bit racist these days. When you look back in it, there, there was also Mr. Wong's Loopy Laundry. And you kind of think, um, okay. <laughs> um, but, you know, it's um, it's an interesting thing. And, and yeah, I was just uh, cross-legged on the floor playing Spectrum games um, with an old uh, 48K once I'd figured out how it all plugged into the tape recorder and stuff. So I did get to play on 48K Spectrum. And my friend had one as well, so we played on, on that as well. Um, yeah, yeah. It's um, another thing. And you get that more these days than than you did back then, was uh, peripherals. Um, there weren't that many peripherals that you got for the Spectrum. I mean, I know you could get things like Microdrive and stuff, but I never had anything like that. I did, however, have the light gun, um, which came with games like Robot Attack, uh, bullseye, <laughs> based on the old Jim Blo Bowen vehicle, and um, Operation Wolf is my favourite memory of uh, of those kind of things. Um, it was a bit distracting with the lines you got across the screen as it was trying to detect your shots, but it was just completely unique to be able to play that kind of light gun game in your home. And I'd never done that before, it was amazing. Um, I also had a light pen where you could draw on the screen, but it never worked. I never got it to work. Uh, I don't know whether it required a certain kind of TV to work properly, or it was just a massive scam, I don't know. But And, and to be honest, why would you ever want to draw on the screen? I mean, that's never going to be comfortable. Do you want like a tablet or something like that? But, you know, it was um, me exploring the uh, joys of finding new stuff on the old Spectrum. Um... As well as that, uh, I had the old Cheetah 1 to 8 joysticks. Um, never had game pads and stuff in those days. And they all, they all had micro switches clicking around in the uh, in the cardinal directions. And it was great. And actually, um, I had a lot of sort of family fun. I mean, I was an only child. But um, I spent hours on a weekend playing uh, like Gauntlet 2 with my mom. Um, just plowing through level after level. And actually, one of my memories of the Spectrum is my mom playing fast food Dizzy and breaking the joystick. because She was so eager to be get, getting away from the ghost, she just cracked it to one side and uh, and snap. And it never worked again. <laughs> I had to go out and get a new joystick. But um, they were fairly durable when you weren't sort of uh, abusing them like that. Um and there was loads of uh, joysticks and, uh, and gay pads, a little bug joystick and all stuff like that. Was, was that with Spectrum or was that the Amiga? It all merges into one sometimes. Um, my sort of favourite games, uh, Chaos. Chaos is my favourite game. I've got the, uh, the old T-shirt on um, at the moment. And um, yeah, amazing strategy game by Julian Gollop. Uh, I loved the Dizzy games. I had all of them. So my, my plan to uh, to pick up all of them and get get my collection back in that respect, but um, yeah, th there was there were so many games. Uh, Daily Thompson's Decathlon. I played that on the channel. That was a that was a, another another favourite of mine. But um, yeah, I, I kind of regret having to sell it. But 
I'll, I'll get it back one day when I've uh, got some money together to do it. Um, it'll be pretty good. Um, what other memories do I have of the Spectrum? There was also there was the classic game shops. There was one in uh, my hometown called Software City, and you'd walk in and it was like a it's like a cave, sort of treasure with just walls of of uh, tapes and tapes and tapes for like Spectrum and C sixty four and uh, and like Amstrad and all those sorts of things. And it uh, it was pretty amazing to be honest. Um, just shops don't have that same wonder for me anymore in terms of games um, because they would just have so much stock, doesn't they? Yeah. A game only takes up like a tiny bit on the shelf, doesn't it? So, um, I mean, obviously the big box games, but, you know, most of the games weren't in that kind of format. And there were other game shops I went to in other neighbouring towns, which were equally places where you'd uh, wander in and have a real sort of, uh, just spend half an hour going, hmm, not heard of that one, what's this? That sounds vaguely interesting and it costs 99p. I'll take that, please. Um, oh, it's terrible, but... <laughs> <laughs> you never know. You never know. Um, and Spectrum was really what got me into the IT industry, uh, which I'm in now, um, because uh, you have the old programming, and I used to fiddle around with basic. I didn't do a lot, anything particularly impressive, uh, not like uh, some of the homebrew people these days can manage, but um, I did manage to uh, knock out a few sort of vague adventure games and text adventure games and things like that, and it just fiddling around with basic really got me started, you know. Um, and yeah, I can't think of much more right off the top of my head. Um, oh, there was that one time where, when, um, I put my, uh, Magic Land Dizzy tape down on the table and there was a little cellar tape on there and I had this horrible moment of trying to peel off, peel off the tape, uh, the, uh, try to peel off the cellar tape from the, uh, from the tape on the, uh, on the, uh, on there and hoping it still worked and it did. Oh, such a relief. <laughs> it's like this is a, this is a tragedy. Magic land dizzy is broken. Uh, but yeah, it was a it, it it was pretty amazing back in the day. Um, eventually, I moved on to the Amiga, um, but I still emulated stuff on the Amiga for the Spectrum. Uh, and there's a real place in my heart for it. To be honest, with those eight uh, bit computers. But uh, I tried to. I don't think there's much more to tell you, to be honest. Um, so, I think I'll leave it there. Happy birthday, Spectrum. Uh, here's to another, like, well, I'll still be around, hopefully, for 50 years. That will be a, that'll be a big uh, big bash. Uh, and maybe I'll have a bit of a collection to uh, show off to you then. But, uh, if you enjoyed hearing my memories of the Spectrum, um, maybe you'd like to uh, drop me a, a like and a subscribe. That's uh, all appreciated. Click the notifications button to get uh, more... Uh, um, to get your notifications about what's going to be on the channel, and uh, I will see you next time. Goodbye.